Once upon a time, or to be more accurate, at the last weekend in July 2019, I found myself at hell, at the very tip of the Hell Peninsula, and this is where this story starts. This is my summer tour of that year, which takes the route you can see in the map. To give you an overview, here's the area in a general sense, putting it into context in Europe, and here it is in more detail. Or if you want it more simply, this is it. Hell, Gdansk, Kashubia, Elblong, Tuchev, Gniev and Grujons. For the sake of honesty, I need to point out that the map is a simplified version of my route. In reality, it was a lot more complicated than I show here. What are my favourite places from those I have visited? This is a question I often get asked. Santa Barbara, California, Moscow, Eastern Sicily, where I used to live around Augusta, the Isonzo Socha Valley in Italy and Slovenia, Berlin. But my favourite place of all is Northern Poland. I could happily spend the winter in Sicily and then come here in the summer. That would suit me. I visited this area several times in the 1980s. I lived here in the 1990s and I always talk of going back. In other words, I'm biased and you're gonna hear the words, my favorite, this is great, and things like this throughout this video. But never mind, let's get on with the journey. So, let's say the hell is my start off point, and that's what you're looking at right now. If this is hell, what is heaven like? You can write that down below, I bet somebody will. The excuse I found to go there was because of an RV exhibition. It was the smallest exhibition I've ever been to, but there was a great atmosphere, and that is all that counts. Here you can see me talking uh, at the exhibition in front of the camera. I arrived on the Friday before the event started and that night a film was being made using the place where I was to park. The film is called Jaxostown Gangsterdom in English that would be how I became a gangster and was due to be released in January 2020. As that has now been and gone, I haven't seen the film or heard anything about it, but maybe it's on general release, who knows? The abandoned warehouse was used as a film set, and here we can see my van parked in it once filming was completed. So I wasn't really parked outside the Go-Go Club. At least that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. During the night, I got hemmed in by the film crew. Directly next to me was a generator and there was very strong lighting for the fit scenes that would be shot there. I didn't see any of it. I was asleep immediately. Somebody even told me that there were gunshots. Well, I missed them as well. Or maybe he did as well. I don't know. I haven't seen the film. Anyway, I was bright and early up the next morning to see the fishing boats coming into the port. This also gave me the chance to buy some fresh fish recently caught from the boat.
So I just bought myself a filleted place and for that it's approximately what 220 grams after being filleted and I paid six water which is approximately one euro forty something like that. Anyway, great, I'll take that back now and then I'll continue filming. Hell is a fishing village located at the very end of the Hell Peninsula. It was once a military area closed to visitors, but now it's a tourist destination in summer. I've been there out of season, and as might be expected, it's pretty dead. However, this was in season, and there were a lot of people around. And we even got a concert in the evening, which was pretty good. Pretty good for visitors, for those poor fishermen who had to be up early the next morning, they mightn't have been so impressed. for its seal sanctuary. Seals can be found in this part of the Baltic Sea. So of course a visit to the sea sanctuary and museum is a must. There's also a historic lighthouse which one can visit, which is close to the campsite where friends of mine were staying. The campsite may seem expensive, but I would ask people to remember that it's only open for a very short season and it can offer this fantastic location. The facilities at the campsite are not particularly good and it costs around 25 euros per night. Also worth seeing in Hell are the military fortifications. They run in three distinct phases, sometimes overlapping each other. There's the pre-war period, which covers the Battle of the Hell Peninsula in 1939, Hell being the last place which surrendered to the Nazi invaders. There are also military remains from the Nazi occupation and from the communist period when Hell was a closed area. One can see these military structures by taking the newly built walkway around the tip of the peninsula, either by bike or on foot. I visited here for the first time in 1983, when it was still a closed area. I was asked to keep my mouth shut, not to reveal my foreign accent while speaking Polish. The guard points along the road are still visible. And look at how large the beach is! and how peaceful it is, even in the height of summer. From hell, I drove back down the peninsula. I had planned on stopping at a couple of places en route, but everywhere was full. So I went to Zhuchevo. I found the overnight location from Park for Night, but I'd been to Zhuchevo many times before. 
I lived in Gdynia in the 1990s and often used to come here. It was a nice day trip up the coast. Today there's an outdoor museum where one can see how seal hunters lived in prehistoric times. There's also a castle. This dates back to 1840. It's not as old as it looks. It belonged to the same family until 1945 when it was turned into an agricultural cooperative. In 1994, the current castle was rebuilt as a hotel. The next stop was Gdynia Orwovo. Once more, this is a very personal thing, but this is one of my favourite places. Within one of my favourite places, you may think. There's a car park, which I've used before uh, uh, for an overnight stay in my camper van. I did this in 2011, and uh, I've seen other motorhomes there at other times of the uh, year as well. In Gdansk, I stayed at a place which was designated Echo Parking. I think because of the shuttle buses that run from here are not diesel operated. This was an absolutely outstanding location as it was only a few hundred meters from the coast and this allowed me to see the sun coming over the sea at dawn promising another fine summer day. You may have seen these clips used on other videos I do. I stayed in Gdansk in the summer of 2009 and explored a great deal on my bicycle. The fantastic coastal cycle path has now been extended. I love this coastal cycle path. And guess what? It's one of my favorite paths. It is, sorry, it is my favorite bike route anywhere. Well, you know, of those are, I have seen. Gdansk is my favorite place. Now I've visited lots of cities. I won't go into it now. I'm not gonna to start to say why Gdansk is so great. I'm gonna do uh, lots of other videos on Gdansk and uh, there's so much to do and see there. Uh, obviously in my own case, it's a certain emotional attachment as well. So that's clouding my view. Uh, but uh, the best time to go there, I think, is August. My visit coincided with the annual fete, so there were hundreds of stalls selling all sorts of produce, and this added to the atmosphere. It's fantastic, but you have to see that in other films. From Gdansk, I went to the village of Wapino, where I visited camper van producer Bull Camp. This village is on a lake, and as I've been meaning to do a video on hydroelectric plants in the former free city of Gdansk for at least 10 years, it allowed me to have a look at one of them. There's also a rather curious w railway service there. From Wapino, I went to Privij, 
and in particular to the wonderful Lavendova Osada. This is a recent agro-tourism destination started by a couple from the area with a fascination for lavender. As I am also interested in lavender, or admittedly not the same level as they are, I had to visit. They have spent years developing this location. They prepare the food, they collect the lavender, they plant it as well. They're doing the building work to develop it further. And of course, they know the difference between the various types of lavender that they have. They have a small astronomical observatory as well, so you can look at the moon in detail, which I have never seen uh, well, the moon before, but not as much detail as I did then. I uh, also saw Saturn, and we looked at many stars. Oh, fascinating. Anyway, so if you think I'm biased as far as Lavendova or Sada is concerned, have a look at their reviews, and you'll see it's not just my opinion. If you're in the Gdansk area, it's a fantastic place for a weekend. Or anywhere in northern Poland, I'd say it's a fantastic place for a, a, a weekend. If you can travel from further afield, uh, definitely a um, superb place to spend a week at the uh, town, or maybe I should say village of Privic. And I shall be doing a video on it. And in particular, an unusual story from the stables there but you'll have to wait for me to do the video uh, on that subject now from here I uh, went to Elblong now one curious location on the road is it a uh, hamlet called Nova Kostelnica where one finds two Mennonite houses which are probably hundreds of years old the Mennonites are an Anabaptist religious denomination I think, which is similar to the Amish in the United States. There aren't any uh, Mennonites there now, but their properties, or their houses, the houses they built, still can be seen. Now, uh, so far I've been very upbeat in this uh, video, but uh, I'm now uh, going to come down a little bit. I do want this to be an upbeat video because I think it's a fantastic location, but you where you have things which are fantastic, you also have things which aren't uh, very good as well. And in Elblong I had a nasty experience. I had been looking forward to going on a canal boat ride there. Now what's particularly interesting about the Ostruda Elblong Canal is that uh, there's a location where the boats are pulled up hills. The canal was designed between 1825 and 1844 when construction began. The difference in height of a 9.5 kilometer stretch between two lakes was too great for building traditional locks. Therefore, uh, a system of inclined planes was used to complement the locks. Now, you still get inclined planes where boats are pulled up in various places in the last few years, for example, uh, in Canada and in Russia. Uh, I know of uh, inclined planes which have been built. But look, this was built in the 19th century. The canal was opened on the 29th of October, 1860. Anyway, so far, so good. I'm very interested in nature, and I think the bird life along the canal must be fantastic. So even better. Unfortunately, I can only call the company that runs this service as, as a fraud. Uh, and for the first time ever, I gave the lowest possible review for a to tourist destination in Poland. I have actually given one stars before, but uh, never in Poland. I don't want to dwell too much on what happened there, as I don't want to spoil the otherwise very positive experience I had during this trip. Suffice to say, when I complained to the tourist office, I was told there had been a number of people that day who were unhappy, and I, when I mentioned it at a tourist event I attended, uh, there I was told that there's nothing they could do and they received constant complaints. Now I appreciate that the tourist office has to uh, market uh, people who are paying taxes in the area uh, for their tourist products and that stands the reason. And uh, having said that though, lots of people will go to Elblong for this, uh, or Astruda as well, for this canal journey. 
and uh, as long as this company is doing it then I'm afraid it, the, the, the complaints uh, are just going to continue in my opinion well, not just my opinion, the opinion of quite a lot of people so in theory the canal trip sounds wonderful but in practice it isn't the next thing that cheesed me off on Elbong was that the campsite uh, couldn't be bothered to respond to me although it was on what appeared to be a very nice canal side location so uh, it didn't matter, didn't, couldn't care less as it turned out. I had a first class spot for my van directly by the canal next to the museum, which has been rebuilt. The rebuilding of Elblong is very well documented in the History Museum, which has a clever juxtaposition of hundreds of years of life in the city with the pile of ruin, ruins World War II left it in. Throughout the exhibition, one is reminded of the ruins, yet the richness of its history. It's a success story as it rises from the ashes at the end. This is a first-class exhibition well worth seeing. From here, I went to Chechev. I stayed next to the two historic bridges over the Vistula River. I shall be examining the story of these bridges in other videos. The road bridge was constructed between 1851 and 1857. At 837 metres in length, it was then one of the longest bridges in the world. Originally, the bridge had 10 towers and two gateways. Today, only four towers remain. The railway bridge was built between 1888 and 1890, when one bridge was no longer sufficient. On the first day of World War II, the bridges were blown up. We can see this in archival news reports from after the battle. The bridges were once more operational within a few months, although they were blown up again, this time by the retreating Germans, and were not fully repaired until 1959. Unfortunately, the bridges were, or the road bridge anyway, was closed for repairs during my visit. So to see the full length, I got on a train and traveled backwards and then forwards. This is one of the possible locations for the first shots of World War II. In fact, in my opinion, I would say it is the place where World War II started. I'd early gone, earlier gone through military records and I went to the village where the war actually started. And you can see that in another video. Techev also has a museum documenting the Vistula River, which is well worth a visit. Much of Techev was built in the first years of the 20th century, which is to when many of the architectural attractions date, such as the water tower, town hall, library and more. From Techev I went to Gniew. Gniew must be one of the most attractive villages in Poland. Its medieval brick Gothic castle, which was originally built by the Teutonic Order at the end of the 14th century, is outstanding. I was last there more than 20 years ago and was utterly amazed at the development. More than 20 years ago it was a ruin, not any longer. As a historian I see the hotel and wellness development there as being one of the best I've ever witnessed. I also need to point out at this stage, as I've already mentioned other things about my CV, I was on the management board of a hotel development company. The way the castle has been preserved for history whilst making the best possible use of its structure is, in my opinion, out of this world. It has to be seen to be believed. Once more, another thing about my CV, I used to be a business magazine publisher and once a year, and guess what? You'll be able to see more of that in yet another video. Oh, I'm going to be spending a lot of time doing videos. 
From Kiev, I made my way south following the Vistula River until I came to Grudziądz. I have travelled very widely in Poland, but I had not been here before. I am amazed by Grudziądz. This is a tourist pearl and remains to be discovered. It's off the beaten track. Along the banks of the Vistula one finds ancient granaries which have now been converted to residential or business use. The grain trade was once the lifeblood of the Vistula River and this uh, one can see in many locations from the entire length of the river almost and above all of course at Gdansk. But here in Grudjons you've got these enormous structures where grain was once stored. From the top of the Klimek Tower one gets a very good view of the town, the Vistula and the countryside beyond. municipal, it's in the marina, it's got great views of the river and the historic bridge. The uh, motorhome parking area was, if I remember rightly, uh, 40 water, uh, about what, 9 euros, something like that. And guess what? Yes, you can see the videos of these places. Um, also, uh, I'm also planning on doing something about the bridge at Guru John's. I think this is particularly interesting in this type of structure. Anyway, so Guru John's marked the end of my summer tour. From here, I went to Dusseldorf, to Caravan Salon, the largest motorhome trade fair in the world. New adventures awaited me in Germany. and I had some good uh, tours there as well. And uh, you can see that, of course. Well, yes, of course, I've done videos on that. This tour to Northern Poland, though, was for me uh, a walk back in time, not only from uh, the, the summer I'd spent there in 2009, uh, not only when I'd lived there in the 1990s, but also to the 1980s as well. And uh, for me, as I say, Gdansk is the most uh, fantastic city I know anyway right so uh, thanks for staying with me I've been talking now for more than 24 minutes and uh, so I hope you find that of interest and uh, that you'll uh, subscribe I'm doing more and more of these um, videos about tours I've done in certain areas I want to explain to you what van life is like in Europe uh, obviously, I've got things which interest me, uh, which are particular. You know, I'm I'm a historian. That's I'm into nature, and I also, you know, as a former business person, I often see things in this light as well. So, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll keep watching. Thank you.